the moment I had that up on my screen. Uh, there's a comet and uh, the, actually the one that's up now is NGC 2264. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. Do you know what that one, Bob? 2264, uh, no. No, 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 no. I know, I know maybe 120 of the NGC uh, objects. I can picture them, but that one doesn't ring a bell. But these are, in the half meter telescope um, view on the home page, Pat, these are members' images now that we're looking at. I can tell you that the, the next one that's due to start is at in two minutes time and that's going to be comet s1 ison which is the one that uh, bob was telling us about in our show um, earlier on this is the one that might put on a fantastic show for us next year this time next year actually um so a member has scheduled that then another member has scheduled m95 the comet k5 that we were looking at earlier as well there's a whole bunch of comets actually there's a few comet fans on slu tonight um, and then yeah. we've got loads of favorite galaxies coming in. The uh, T2 telescope is all, also coming online uh, just for members who are listening. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, guys, we have right now in the show, I'm just going to take a peek and see how much time I've got counting down. We've got about eight minutes left. You know, we, I've been talking about this all night. So as Paul and Bob, I'm sure in their shows, you know, membership drives it all, the free programming, it, you get an opportunity to control the same robotic observatories we're using tonight in the Canary Islands. You get a, a chance to interact with a worldwide membership. So it's a really unique thing. But tonight, we got a special offer with me. I worked out a deal with them to get one of their real, a really nice entry-level telescope. If you sign up for a yearly or two-year membership, you get that telescope. And my commitment to you is to get it shipped to you before Christmas. So I know it's right around the corner. If you're looking for a cool gift for someone who's kind of interested in space or might want to learn more about it, you know, you, but you get the, to get the whole slew membership for a year or two years, which you can use our facilities to do some really unique and, and cool imaging, or you can have the telescope to do stuff in your back, as Paul calls it. I call it backyard. Paul calls it his back garden. Uh, but, you know, you're, you could go out in your backyard and use it to take a, a peek at the moon or maybe something in the, the Saturn or Jupiter or something like that as well. So it's kind of a nice compliment. And tonight only is that offer. And that's the last time I'll probably be selling that telescope for the rest of the year. So um, this is your chance to get it. And if you do it tonight as a member, you're in. So, uh, but it will go off as soon as the show ends in about 10 minutes or so. So make sure you sign up. All right, Bob, um, what else can you tell us about? I, one thing I was trying to figure out is what would happen if an asteroid this big would hit Earth? Because we know the one that hit dinosaurs was six miles why this one's three but you that's had mentioned right. on the earlier show it might not be as bad because it was not traveling as fast that's Maybe right tell us yes. more about that uh, that last one hit uh, is called the chichalub crater because it's in that part of the yucatan most of the craters under the sea just off the coast of the yucatan it was a faster uh object and a, a more massive one but uh speed matters size matters too but speed matters even more because the formula for the kinetic energy the power that's released by an impacting asteroid hitting earth uh, is the mass that is the weight times the velocity squared so the velocity is ultra important in this particular case to tatis is only moving at three miles uh per second and that may, may seem fast. After all, it's six times faster than a high velocity rifle bullet. But when you realize that the uh, asteroid fragments that will hit us two nights from now and light up the sky and produce the beautiful Geminid meteor shower, all of them fragments of an asteroid, of an actual asteroid that has uh, disintegrated, uh, those will hit us at 22 miles per second, seven times faster. And so seven times seven is 49. So figure you'd have 50 times more damage, Pat, if you had been impacted by uh, Phaethon, which is the parent asteroid of the Geminid meteors two nights from now, which by the way, are gonna happen under a perfect dark new moon. Don't miss that. If you live away from the lights of town or if even if you're in the darker suburbs, definitely go out if you have a clear night. 
uh, especially after 10 p.m. Thursday night coming up, and you'll see what happens when fragments of an asteroid collide with us. They are going to be lighting up the night. You should see a shooting star every minute or two. So if the entire asteroid hit us at that speed, whoa, that's bad luck. But at the, at the current rate of three miles per second, we would survive this one if this one hit us, Pat. Oh, that's interesting. And I want to, if right. I can just point out, uh, I just want to point out the video that Paul is displaying um, in his Google Plus Hangout feed. Uh, it's very cool. You know, you really get a sense of asteroid motion against the background sky. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. And by the way, that image that you just saw of uh, Matt Francis, he is expecting the end of the world and you can see he's in his underground bunker right now you'll notice behind him are all the food and water uh, things <laughs> like that and he's uh he's hunkered down with his uh with his girlfriend uh and uh Dude, I, so, I think Matt's a, i think he looks more like a superhero man with that like the bat cave or something uh, he, <laughs> i like he, that uh, i'm a superhero uh -huh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're going to see this next week uh, I hope everybody joins us for our end of the world show because that's going to be so cool we're going to be looking all around the solar system and at the sun and at the magnetic poles of earth and other planets we're going to be looking in every possible way for anything weird or unusual that might accompany this Mayan calendar business this is your place in fact this is your only possible website or place to go if you want to monitor what is happening or not happening on the winter solstice. We're going to be leading up to that with shows all of next week. You don't want to miss it. Be there or it'll be too late because you won't be alive anymore. You'll you got miss it. it. So uh, this is going to end the broadcast. We've got a few minutes left to the countdown on the homepage of slew.com. The live feeds will go off. I want to thank uh, Bob Berman from Astronomy Magazine for joining us tonight. Bob's been a longtime SLU friend. Uh, he is an author of many books, but here's one of his most recent ones, The Sun's Heartbeat. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll put it on the main uh, screen here so you can see it. Um, it's a great Christmas idea. Time, if you go to Amazon, you still have time to get it. I also want to thank Matt Francis for the feed from Arizona. Uh, it was great, and thanks for helping out, Matt. I, I, I'm not sure what I would have done by myself for 45 minutes <laughs> on the show, so uh, thanks for helping me out there. And we've got Paul Cox. Uh, it was a little blurry right now, but uh, he's from the U.K. He was commanding the Canary Islands Observatory for us, showing us some different things as well. Um, as Bob, as mentioned before, we will be doing some programming next week for the End of the World broadcast on a lot of different topics. All live feeds will accompany any uh, show that we do. So we may do a solar show, the hunt for Nibiru or Planet X, whatever you want to talk about. You know, we're not government owned, so we'll give you a true look at the sky and you can make your own decisions about what's going to happen. We'll just be we'll be neutral observers, I guess. We'll just wait to see what happens. Uh, but we don't believe that the world will end. None of us do. So. You should be in good hands here. But if it does, <laughs> you can you can celebrate it with us. Yeah, uh, yeah, you'll down. be in good company. We'll, we'll have fun. <laughs> we'll have right. fun. Um, all right, guys. Well, we went long tonight because of all the audio issues that popped up. But I think we had a good show. For those of you that saw Bob and Paul, that's great. Or if you got Pat and Matt, uh, we'll see who got the bigger numbers. We'll see who had the bigger, later, bigger yeah. show. We'll vote later see so who had the better show. Uh, all right, guys. Well, I think we've been on long enough. Uh, Matt, I'll give you a shout this week about programming, and Paul will talk as Bob will talk as well about this stuff. So, okay. All right, guys. Uh, have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Uh, first loose space camera is Patrick Pellucci. Good night. <laughs>